Hi everyone, thanks for joining and welcome to Beauty in Focus, Real Self's new virtual content series, focused on providing you with a deeper understanding of key topics related to medical aesthetics in all things modern beauty. I'm Carolyn Sue, the head of content at Real Self, and I'm your moderator today. Today's episode is focused on preventing and treating sun damage. We will explore the latest and greatest products in in-office tech, and our experts will answer your top questions. And for all our viewers today, make sure you stay until the end of our 30 minute session because we have a special giveaway and gift courtesy of SkinCeuticals that you won't wanna miss. Please join me in welcoming our guests. We have Dr. Sonia Badrushia Bonsal, a board certified dermatologist and real self expert based in San Francisco, California. Welcome. We have Kat Sadler, three time Emmy award winning journalist, TV host and executive producer and host of the podcast Naked with Kat Sadler. Welcome. And we have Erica Martin, a Senior Education Manager at SkinCeuticals. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for having us. Uh, uh, so we're going to start by going through some of the top questions that we receive from consumers about sun protection and SPF. And so first, let's talk about how this year is a little different for all of us. <laughs> uh, most of us probably haven't been spending a lot of time outside but we're all eager to go out and get some fresh air in the coming weeks and months. So that kind of leaves us wondering, what do people need to know about returning outside after spending more time than usual indoors? So Dr. Sonia, can you tell us a little bit more about this? What are you telling your patients? Well, thank you, Carolyn. That's a great question. Um, and thank you for having me. I think this is a really great, important discussion to have with each other to really get the information out there to our consumers. And especially because it has been a very strange time for all of us and you know what is going on right now with the quarantine and as we lift our orders and how is our skin changed as a result of this, right? So there's some good news and some bad news that go along with this. Um, the good news is because we have been quarantined, we've been staying indoors, you know, the skin stressors have been reduced, you know, when it comes to pollution and sun damage and not having to wear makeup every day. So, you know, there is an upside to this. However, um, there's also some bad news that comes with staying indoors. And, you know, the number one misconception that I think people have is that you don't need to wear sunscreen while you're still indoors. And I get that all the time. And so our recommendation truly is you want to wear sunscreen every single day, rain or shine, you know, quarantine or not, um, 365 days a year to really protect your skin. And so people don't understand that concept. You know, why? Why should I wear sunscreen when I'm indoors? And so there's a couple of reasons. Number one, there's a lot of incidental ultraviolet radiation that enters in into our home through our windows. It only filters UVB, but it doesn't filter the UVA, which is responsible for aging, um, other skin cancers, which are actually more harmful to us, brown spots, lines, wrinkles, you know, the list goes on. In addition, I think that, you know, when I go outside, I still see people outside. They're, you know, hiking or biking or spending some time with their families. They're out, out there in their gardens. So you still need sunblock, even for those short bouts of outdoor um, sun that you're getting. Um, so that's number one. I think that's the key differentiator here is you want to wear your sunblock every day. But in addition, I think people are staying indoors and inside in um, dry weather and just dry, um, you know, indoor air. So that's also causing more dry skin, maybe some more breakouts. Um, so this is a perfect time to start switching over your skincare regimen to something that's more thicker, thicker based creams serums that's going to hydrate your skin that's going to bring the moisture back um, and then in addition it's also been a stressful time for a lot of people so you know they're probably not really great with their diets there's poor diet maybe poor sleep patterns people are stressing out and i hear about it they're getting broken out um, you know they're probably drinking more alcohol or you know <laughs> refined sugars and processed foods i know i've been guilty of a little bit of that um, and that's breaking out their skin so I think that there's um, definitely a shift with our skin, with the quarantine, and this is a great time to also help with exfoliating all those quarantine dead skin layers off, refreshed, new glowing skin under that, and really keeping um, really good skincare with extra moisturization and a lot of protection with sunblock. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I feel good. like I learned something. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, chat. <laughs> I'm sitting you here that. with my, I have, I have windows all in front of me. I have windows behind me. Yes, I yes. don't, I mean, I usually put on my sunscreen every single morning, but the thought of relathering, even as the day goes on, even if you are indoors, is so important. And, and I hear you so very much. I think, you know, if there's a silver lining of this pandemic, I, I have, maybe some of you can relate. I've been much more regimented in my skin skincare routine. I've been, you know, doing more exfoliating. I've been doing more masks. I've been really kind of, it's nice that our skin in many ways has been getting a break. I mean, today was the, like maybe the fifth time I've put on makeup in like two months. So all of that is, is probably a win. I do have to say, however, for me, because I am here in Los Angeles and I have the luxury of going in my backyard and I have a pool, like I have found that I've been outside more often than I normally would this time of year. I mean, normally we're off to meetings or we're off, you know, working or, or you know, shuttling the kids around. And I, I actually kind of woke up a couple weeks into quarantine and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting more sun than I normally do. I need to really be careful, especially when so, for so many of us, are walking more than we used to or taking a jog, whereas we used to be inside in a gym maybe. So I think it's the good thing about our masks is they cover half our face. So that's been nice when I'm out <laughs> and about. I'm like, well, that part's covered. Um, but, but I've had to be extra, extra um, religiously committed to my son's skincare and sunscreen uh, ritual. I find myself using sunscreen now more than really I ever have. Mm -hmm. Kat, one important point you actually made with that is with the masks, yes, you're getting some sun protection, but some people are also getting more irritated and also more breakouts from it too. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a yin and a yang to all of this. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, well, I Go no, go ahead, please. I just wanted to add um, one other little piece, you know, that kind of ties into everything that Dr. Sonia had said, and then Kat, too, talking about getting more of that sun exposure is not just sunscreen, but thinking about making sure we're using antioxidants. And that's something that, you know, we think about protecting ourselves against the sun, and we always think sunscreen. But using a vitamin C antioxidant that's properly formulated every day can, from the very beginning, offer you some of that prevention to that damage. And then we're protecting with sunscreen. And now we're really helping to fortify our skin against those aggressors. And then also that can be a little bit hydrating, especially when you're using a vitamin C and E serum together, like C Ferulic. It can help with that extra kind of dry and dehydrated skin that we're getting right now. So sunscreen and antioxidants is something that if you're not using, now's a great time to start trying to incorporate that into your skincare routine as well. So um, all of you guys really just kind of answered one of our reader's most common questions, which is, you know, is it necessary to use sunscreen and protection every day? The answer is a resounding yes. Um, the scary fact is like our research shows that only 16% of women and 6% of men are actually applying sunscreen every day. And so do you guys have any tips on how you personally incorporate sunscreen and sun protection into your daily routine? Like what, you know, are, are there just like a set of two or three products that you always have on hand that you're throwing in your handbags that you keep in your car? Uh, what tips do you have for the 80% of Americans that are not applying sunscreen every day? <laughs> Definitely. So, I mean, I can kind of jump in here. Um, I like to use a sunscreen every day that is tinted, um, not a makeup that's a sunscreen, that's a different thing, but a tinted sunscreen. So a product that first and foremost is designed to protect you, but also has a tint, because I feel like if I'm applying that, that kind of feels like I'm getting that color, I'm getting that cor complexion correction. And so I'm much more likely to want to wear that every day because it's achieving two goals for me instead of like, oh, I forgot to put my sunscreen on. So that's the first thing that I have in my skincare routine every day. I love Physical Fusion. Um, it's a SkinCeutical product because it's really lightweight and tinted, but I really feel motivated to wear it every day because my skin looks great and I'm protected. And I think that's a huge key is to find a sunscreen that you feel like not only protects you, but your skin looks great. You love the way it feels because then you feel motivated and excited to apply that product. It doesn't feel like a chore and you'll never forget because it's part of your skincare routine and you love the way your skin looks. So I think that would be my first tip is find something that you love the way it looks and feels. And then it's also giving you that at least SPF 30 protection. Yeah. 
Another big motivator, I think people spend, especially, you know, when they get like myself in my mid forties later in life, and you start to see the damage that the sun has done and you spend so much energy. I know I do every day kind of undoing the effects of the sun and all the crazy things I did as a teenager, which I know we'll get into. And, and so for me, just it's, it's, it's non-negotiable. Like now it's like, why wouldn't I put on a sunscreen uh, every single day? Why wouldn't I even put on a booster added to my foundation even that I mix in with my makeup? The, the tinted uh, moisturizers, the sunscreen are wonderful also. So for me, it's, it's just kind of like, if I'm gonna do all this work and maybe do the in-office treatments and spend so much money reversing the damage, why in the world wouldn't I put on the sunscreen every day or it's all for nothing? <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely. And absolutely. Kat, you made a really important a distinction that sunscreen is just non-negotiable. It just, you've yeah. got to wear it every single day. And Erica, you had some great recommendations with that. And I agree, antioxidants is part of the bigger picture when it comes to protecting your skin from UV damage and all the things that we, you know, our skin goes through and wreaks havoc. Um, you know, just for the educational piece for just sunscreens, there's two different kinds of sunscreens, right? There's the chemical-based ones, and then there are the physical-based ones. And there's pros and cons to both of them. Um, chemicals work by um, actually absorbing into the skin. And so when the ultraviolet radiation enters, it um, captures that heat energy and uh, ultraviolet radiation and turns it into something else and therefore being able to um, help prevent against you know, sun damage and aging and skin cancers, most importantly. Um, recently, there's been, you know, some, you know, bad press with chemicals when it comes to controversies and, you know, the likelihood of absorption into the bloodstream and hormonal effects, as well as the environment and how it's, you know, being banned in some states because of the coral reefs. So, you know, one, the pro is, is it's very cosmetically elegant and the best sunscreen is always going to be the one you're going to use is always my recommendation. Um, but you just want to know, you know, what is the information and the misinformation that's out there and the misconceptions about it. So it's not that we wouldn't use sunscreen. We still recommend sunscreen, um, either chemical versus the physical base. The physical base tend to have zinc oxide, titanium dioxide in it. You can think about them as these small little beads that are just sitting on top of the skin, offering you know physical barrier, sort of a shielding effect, so that when the ultraviolet radiation comes, it actually just reflects that ultraviolet radiation off your skin. It diffuses it, um, and so it's what I love about it. The pros are you know you're not going to be allergic to it because there are some problems with chemical sunscreens and allergic reactions and things. It's more environmentally friendly. Um, people don't like it necessarily because they remember. But, you know, the days when the lifeguards would use it on their nose <laughs> to protect themselves from the sun and the ultraviolet radiation. So they're like, how am I going to put that on my skin? But, you know, the technology has advanced so much in mineral sunscreens so that they don't have to look like that, be, you know, opaque and thick and white and pasty. They're actually more sheer, more invisible zinc, and they do the job. So um, I think that they're safer overall, just in general, and people are more likely to use that. But again, you know, the, the best one is going to be the one that works for you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one more thing, the younger generation, and when it comes to tanning beds, because our young generation, I saw that look cat, so I think you were probably part of that generation that used the tanning beds and probably still do. And so those are the most harmful UV rays that you can possibly, you know, do for your skin. It is worse when it comes to uh, photo aging, sun damage, but also the worst skin cancers that you can get is from those tanning beds. So it's really important to get that message and the misconception that, you know, you don't need a base tan to go on your vacation. You don't need any tan that is a protective tan. It's all of it is bad for your skin. You need a good self tanner that comes in a bottle is what yes. you need. <laughs> <laughs> and a spray tanner that's your best friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So Dr. Sonia, I know, uh, thank you so much for giving us the overview of the different types of sunscreens. Are there any other tips or advice that you give your patients on how to read labels? Like, are there always um, things you should look out for, like key ingredients that you definitely want your sunscreen to have or anything to avoid? Like, what do those numbers mean? Um, you know, let yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I recommend always broad spectrum protection. SPF 30 or higher. Now there isn't a big difference between SPF 30 and 100, which I'm glad, you know, I, I pat my patients on the back when they're using 100, but there's probably only like a 1% difference. Um, 
the people that are more, you know, sensitive skin, break out, um, have issues with uh, allergic reactions, I'll recommend more of those physical based sunblocks. So the ones that contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide in it. Um, the ones that have any sort of photosensitivity, um, especially with conditions like lupus or, you know, are on certain photosensitizing medications, this, the mineral based sunscreens just always work better in general. Um, and then in addition, one other added um, benefit with the sunscreen market is we've learned that there is a potential for blue light from electronics, such as your computer and your iPads and your phones to also cause uh, skin damage you know, into your skin and cause that photo aging as well as pigmentation issues. So my you know, melasma patients or the ones that want to you know, help with sun prevention also need that added benefit of blue light prevention because that's also causing more damage. So I'll also recommend using something with iron oxide in it and they tend to be more tinted. So there's a lot of the mineral based um, uh, brushes. I love the brushes to just reapply your sunblock and those often contain zinc oxide and also iron oxide. So the ones that are tinted, um, that's my preference go to because you'll get that added more broad spectrum protection in general and just making sure you're reapplying it every two hours that you are outdoors to again prevent skin cancers prevent aging um, the important study that i found with real self was they um, had polled the um, consumers and there was a high percentage of consumers that said they wanted to use sunscreen to prevent skin cancer but in reality what i see is if I can, you know, vouch for their vanity, I'm more likely to get the behavioral change. So if I'm telling them to prevent lines and wrinkles and brown spots and pigmentation, they're more likely to use their sunblock rather than if I say you're going to die from skin cancer. Amazingly enough. <laughs> it's like one of the most effective anti-aging products out there, right? And so like, like all of you um, gals, I also love a tinted. So it's like a three in one. It's like my makeup, my anti-aging, and my health product all in one. Um, and then I would agree also with Erica and just finding one with antioxidants in it too. Mm -hmm. So there is like these dual triple acting sunblocks that is also very convenient for you know someone to use and reapply. Absolutely. Can I ask one follow-up question just since we are on the topic of sunscreen and, and, and if it works and how it works. Um, what about doctor just even like I even use a, a, a lip balm that says it has an SPF of 30 or my eye cream says, you know, it has an SPF or even certain hats that I wear claim that they are cutting out these UV rays. Is that typically the case? I mean, can we be confident that, you know, it's labeled that it's actually working or not? Because I, I take all the precautions, but sometimes I'm like, I don't even know if it's really doing the job it's supposed to be. Yes, that's a great question. And there is a lot more FDA regulation behind the labeling of sunscreens because you're exactly right. It's, it's really having more stricter standards for sunscreens and making sure, firstly, are we applying it and reapplying it properly to prevent the sunburns and preventing the sun damage that we're after. If they are labeled as SPF 30 and broad spectrum, typically they go through added stability and added safety testing so that we should be confident that they are doing the job. Um, I always say take a look at the back and read the ingredients because if it's got, you know, those chemical versus the uh, physical blockers, it's doing the job. Again, the zinc and titanium are going to do, just in my opinion, I think a better job overall. Um, and that's exactly right. You don't want to forget about like your, li your lips because you can burn your lips. You can get skin cancers on your lips, you know, especially for guys, they get it on their ears. So we want to make sure that they're covering their ears or if we're, you know, thinning out in our scalp, that's another area people forget about. Um, so yeah, I agree. I think you want to be a good label reader, ingredient reader, and making sure that you're doing your job as well to reapply it. And I do agree. There's other ways to adjunctively help that with the hats, you know, the sunglasses, there's UPF rated clothing, which I love. And those also go through very uh, solid testing. And so that would be my other recommendation is along with protecting your skin, you want the adjunctive, you know, things to also help protect you for, again, the incidental rays that you might be getting. And Dr. Sonia, we want to wear enough sunscreen. That's another thing that people don't do is wear enough 
you really need that like half of a teaspoon just for your face, the shot glass full for your entire body, which is another reason why having a combination of like a makeup sunscreen product is not what you want to do because a lot of people don't wear a half a teaspoon of that makeup. So applying that sunscreen, making sure you've got that full coverage and you're wearing enough is another key that people tend to forget. So. And you know, one thing, Erica, that people will tell me is, you know, I'm wearing my, my makeup and it's got sunscreen in it. Is that enough? No. And the answer is no. So <laughs> no. <laughs> we want the layering effect. I always say to choose a product that is a pure sunscreen or a moisturizing sunblock, but then I like the added effect of layering on with a makeup that contains sunblock within it. Exactly. So doctor, do you always recommend putting on your sunscreen first in your routine? So good question. Um, whenever I recommend products, um, you know, we go through cleansing your face and then let's do the thinner kind of serums first. The vehicles matter, right? Then do the thicker like moisturizers and things, um, eye creams at that time. The last step is your sunblock before your makeup goes on. Because think of it as kind of, we want a shield. We want that barrier effect. So everything else that's really good to our skin, we want it to absorb and then shield with the sunblock. And Erica, we love to hear about like the products that we love, but we also want to know what consumers love. Can you share if there's any like best-selling sun products from SkinCeuticals that your consumers just cannot get enough of? Absolutely. So our by far top product at SkinCeuticals is CE Ferulic, which is our one of our vitamin C antioxidants. And that really is that prevent step. So when we talk about sun care, it's like you've got to start there. That's your very first step on clean skin in the morning. So that is by far our number one product, CE Ferulic. And then when it comes to the sun protection, um, physical fusion is one of our number ones because it's tinted. It's a physical sunscreen. So it's those physical uh, filters that are tinted, but it's a very lightweight. It's a fluid formulation. So it doesn't add any weight to your skin. So we love that. And then we also have a physical matte sunscreen that's a mousse and it actually is oil absorbing. So when you're getting oily, especially in the summertime, I live in Houston, Texas and humidity is real. Mm -hmm. It will actually absorb some of that oil. So we have those different formulations for different skin types, but that light fluid formulation, a lot of people love, or if you're very oily, that oil absorbing formulation people love. So it's really back around to what we've been saying this whole time, find that formulation that your skin loves, start with an antioxidant and then find that sunscreen you love. And those are two really good options for you. Erica, I've got mine here, my seed ferulic. I never was quite sure how to say it. So thank you for clarifying. This is a really, really good product. It is. It's that it, preventative. It's so important. And it's got, doesn't it have like 15% vitamin C or something, pure vitamin C? Yes, and it's L-ascorbic acid. Yes, and that's like that, it's that proper formulation that's key, and I know we're not here to talk about antioxidants necessarily, but it's not just any vitamin C. You've really got to find one that's properly formulated if you want to get that prevention piece, which why not, right? You want to prevent sun damage. Dr. Sonia, if we could prevent sun damage, we can prevent a lot, right? So I love, Kat, that you have that. It's... um. Well, in all the environmental radicals, not even just the sun. I mean, it's Absolutely. the pollution and living in a big city, like all of the things we don't even realize that we can't even see are going to damage our skin over time. Like why not just get the barrier there and get the protection if you can't? Prevent future damage and then we can work on correcting what we already right. damaged. <laughs> That's a perfect segue into my next question, which is we've covered the importance of prevention, but I do also want to address the topic of treatment because maybe some of us have just had a really good summer last summer or many good summers in our childhood or like Kat, we are actually out in the sun a little bit more than usual. So if we already have sun damage, what can we do? And Dr. Sonia, I want to start with you because here at Real Self, we really believe in the power of in-office treatments. Our readers want to know what's worth it, what's going to deliver results. What's the top one or two treatments that you recommend to your patients when they come in with like sunspots or hyperpigmentation or redness stemming from sun damage? So my approach for treating sun damage, because there's is a multi-layer, right? There's brown spots, there's lines, there's wrinkles, there's texture, there's pores, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and my approach to everyone is the same, really. I talk about the three Ps, 
to pretty skin. So number one, I want to prime the skin. So we talked about a lot of the products that's going to help with prevention and priming the skin with sunblocks and vitamin A's and antioxidants, um, you know, exfoliators, things like that. And that will allow us to actually penetrate deeper to in office treatments. My number two uh, P is then to offer for peels. So chemical peels are one of my also go-to favorites. What I like about it, it's more universal. I don't have to be so cautious about my fair skin versus my you know, skin of color because that's another big topic when it comes to skin of color patients and treating with the other modalities such as lasers. So then I go to my third P, which is my procedure. So procedure, um, we spend a lot of time on lasers for sun damage. So my fair skin patients, especially my baby boomers, especially the ones that have had sunburns and history of skin cancers, my go-to for them, like all day long, I love laser resurfacing for them because I get to do a lot in just one treatment. So I can help with fading away some of the brown spots. I can help with collagen rebuilding. I can help with softening those lines and wrinkles. I can help with even prevention of you know, future precancers. So that's my go-to for helping the cosmetic and the skin health of the skin. Now, my skin of color patients, I have to be more cautious. They're not going to be my laser resurfacing candidates because the high risk is going to be hyperpigmentation in them. So I love my colorblind lasers, um, ones that actually have radio frequency for helping with tightening and collagen building. I love microneedling. Um, that's the new kind of thing going on with helping with um, stimulation of collagen under the skin as well. Um, there's also things like uh, PRP, utilizing your own blood and stem cells to help with anti-aging benefits. So I'd say those are kind of the common, my go-to treatments um, that have science behind them that are also very safe. Um, and then in addition for red spots and things, I have other lasers that I'll use. And then, you know, I'm back full circle. Once they're done investing all this time and money, protect and prevent, right? It doesn't make sense to spend money on all these in-office treatments if you don't do your, your primary step, which is priming the skin and then protecting your investment. Mm -hmm. So Kat, I know that you um, are very uh, religious about sun protection now, but you alluded earlier that, you know, uh, that hasn't always been the case. Mm -hmm. Have you, your skin looks amazing. Have mm -hmm. you tried any treatments or products that's helped you, um, you know, kind of get your skin to the amazing place that it is today? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I mean, um, yeah, I, I was that girl at 16 who was in the tanning bed. I was literally that person with the baby oil and the foil around my body to get as dark as I could possibly get. I mean, <laughs> I'm so ashamed of, of what I didn't know then. And, uh, and then, yeah, sunscreen kind of really, I didn't even really start using sunscreen until my mid-20s when I had children because all of a sudden I was like, my babies, my babies, I, I want to protect their skin and I want to protect them. Why am I not protecting myself? So then the light bulb went on. And so, you know, for the last 20 years, I've been very religious about my sunscreen, but it's just been in like recent years where I'm like, I haven't had the lasers or the peels. I know I'm a candidate for it, doctor. I'm going to come see you. Um, because I do, I mean, my biggest, uh, I guess, complaint about my own skin is, is it sunspots and is, you know, the, 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 pigmentation issue I have because of my sun damage. So I, the one treatment that I had that I, that you did mention, um, doctor is microneedling. I have done that, um, multiple times and I really do like the results. Um, and I did notice, and, and I think, uh, when I got the treatment, the doctor at the time said, you know, it, it will, it's not going to remove your sunspots, but it will certainly kind of lighten them a little bit over time with the multiple treatments. And I did see that difference. So I got the benefits of kind of the collagen stimulation. My face felt firmer. I felt more rejuvenated. My skin had a little more radiance, but I also noticed the overall coloration on my face in total really did improve. I even have and in a, a, one of these micro needling tools for home, I don't know. I don't know what the proof is or if the verdict's still out on it, if these actually work. But I do it anyway because I feel like maybe it's working. And um, and it has a little red light on it um, that I think is supposed to help with some of that as well. This is from how how, Beauty how Bio. often do you, how often do you use that at home device? I use it about three nights a week after I do my my nighttime skincare ritual i'll just kind of sit in bed and i'll just you know if the tv's on or whatever and i'll do it I, um all over for a couple minutes 
three nights a week. What do you think? Yeah. So, you know, the at home <laughs> micro needling devices are just, obviously they have to be safe. They've got to go through the safety standards. Um, the difference between at home and the in office is going to be really the depth of those micro needles, right? How deep we go in the office um, will be obviously deeper than an in uh, at home treatment. Um, we can go so deep as deep as, you know, actually causing some, um, you know, blood, actually blood, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, coming out because it's actually going that deep into the skin. Now, it, it probably isn't going to do, you know, obviously that whole before and after picture where you see a huge effect, but it's, I think, going to be fine for something more of a maintenance type of a program. Um, you're not going to have the downtime. It's pretty simple to do, hopefully not very painful versus the in-office treatments where we're just going deeper where the collagen lives. So that's really the difference. Isn't there another treatment called Morpheus? Are you familiar with that? Yes. Which is an even, I had that too, only once because that was so painful yes. that I literally, I started crying lying there on the bed. It was, it was, I mean, my face looked amazing afterwards. Yes. Uh, I'm a believer, um, but A, it wasn't cheap, but B, it hurt really bad. It went yes. as deep, deep, deep as the back can go. Yes. So again, depth of injury into the skin matters. So the deeper we can go, the more collagen stimulation, which is why you look so great. You're probably really puffy and swollen and you look like, Hey, I could, I could live with this and mm -hmm. probably tightened up your pores. So it is a great treatment, um, but it can be sometimes painful. There definitely is numbing required. Um, there's going to be maintenance required from it, but it, it is a, it is a good treatment for collagen stimulation um, and in office treatment. So yeah, I like it. So I feel like I could continue this conversation for hours because we're talking about <laughs> all of my favorite topics, but unfortunately we are almost at time. So I wanted to thank all of our incredible speakers um, and everyone at home for joining us today. Uh, to all of our viewers, you were all entered into a drawing today to win full-size Consutical products. So 10 lucky people will find out that they've won via email after this event. And every viewer today is being gifted a deluxe sample of SkinCeuticals Hyaluronic Acid Intensifier. And so you will also receive an email with instructions on how to claim your deluxe sample. And Erica, quickly before we wrap, can you just share a quick overview of how this product works and why our viewers today will love it? Oh, well, you will love AG Intensifier because its main goal, we often think of hyaluronic acid products as um, for topical hydration. And while this product does offer some topical hydration, what we're really doing with it is amplifying our plumpness, amplifying our fullness. So you wanna use it all over, it really can help with that. But I wanna especially give you a hot tip, all over those lips, we all want those nice full lips. So you can apply this product directly onto your lips, not just around the vermilion border. And it really helps to amplify that fullness and that plumpness along with some of that hydration. So it's hydration and correction. Um, it's truly one of my favorites because it's something that you're gonna see results from pretty quickly and they're pretty impressive. So if you're concerned with that fullness and plumpness, which we all are, you're gonna love this product, so. Awesome. Well, I wanna thank you again, Dr. Sonia and Kat and Erica. I personally also learned a lot. I have to say I wasn't applying sunscreen every day indoors, but now I will be. <laughs> um, and. So thank you again. And for all our viewers today, make sure to follow Real Self on Instagram, at Real Self, and please stay tuned for future Beauty in Focus episodes.